I have to say one. I don't want to provoke others by saying the, the only one. Great. To God be the glory. We thank God for this day. I appreciate our Gio who is not here and our Reverend Anyoku for this great privilege. Indeed, it's a great time for me. And I, for a long time, I will not forget this day. To God be the glory. Indeed, one day, one day. Let's pray. Precious Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. You brought us here to celebrate, to celebrate you, and to listen to your words. Lord, we pray that as we look into your words, you will speak to us. Word that will bring healing, that will bring salvation, that will bring upliftment in every way, in every area of our lives. Speak, Lord, in such a way that your people will understand. And let every word be backed by the Holy Spirit to the glory of your head name. In Jesus' name, amen. The topic is that I might win some, that I might win some. And our text is taken from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. 1 Corinthians 9, 22. The great apostle Paul wrote this passage in the whole of the book. He says in verse 29, to the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might win some. Paul Is telling us here his desire and everything he's doing to reach men and women with the gospel, with the aim of winning as many to Christ, bringing them to Christ for salvation. In the same Corinthians, the same First Corinthians, but this time from verse chapter 1 from verse 18. I want to combine these two scriptures. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 18 to 24, he says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through his wisdom did not know him. God has pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. In verse 22, said Paul, uh, the Jews demand signs and the Greek look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and the foolish, foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. What is Paul saying to us here? He's revealing to us how we can reach all men, every tribe, every race, with the gospel of the kingdom. Within their context, within their culture, how we can reach them. And we have a lot to learn from what Paul 
has written to us, which has been illustrated with his own life when he said, I became all things to all men that I might win some. He's telling us that we can reach men, people of all races, without violating biblical moral principles. We can reach them in their culture. We can reach them in their context without violating scriptural principles. Paul was in Corinth, and he stayed there for close to 18 months, and he was in a city that was very corrupt. He was in a city that morally was nothing to write home about. In fact, one of the goddesses in that city of Corinth was the goddess of love, and the goddess of love had female prostitutes in the temple that every night they will come to the streets. About a thousand of them will come to the streets to meet with men. Paul couldn't have done such a thing in order to win people. He wouldn't have gone to meet the harlots in order to meet them. Even though he wanted to reach all men, but without violating the moral principles. I was speaking with somebody one day. He told me a story of a, a woman uh, who calls herself an evangelist in one of the churches in Joss. This woman was a prostitute. And it is, she believed by so doing, she will win men to the gospel, to her church. So she will go to hotel and sleep with men. In the process, she will witness to them in order to bring them to, to Christ, to her church. That's a violation of moral principles. But you see, the Bible is talking about us here, going to any length to enter the world of others that we might reach them with the gospel of Christ without compromising biblical principles or the teachings of the scripture. So Paul is saying, you and I, we are under obligation. We have the responsibility to reach every tribe in every culture with the gospel so that we might save them. According to the Jews, there are two classes of people on earth or two races on the earth. And the same with the, the uh, Greeks. They also have, they classify the world into two. The Jews believe that we have the Jews and the Gentiles. These are the two groups of people, according to them, that are here on earth. And the Greeks also believe that there are two groups of people. The Greeks, the civilized, and the barbarians, the uncivilized. So Paul is using this clarification to reach each one of them, each one of the groups, to the Jews, to the Greeks. He's using characteristics that is common to them, that they are known by to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that's what we are doing today. I believe that is the intent of this program. I believe is to find a way of reaching our, our own people. But Paul used what was known about them in order to reach them. So it's a means of reaching them. So Paul therefore tells us where we have read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. He said, Jews demand signs. In other words, the first thing we find about the Jews that was common to them is that these people were sign-seeking people. They were looking for signs. They were looking for everybody in, the, in that world knew that the Jewish man is looking for a sign before he will believe. So Jesus said, uh, Paul said, the Jew demands for signs. That is what is known about them. And that was what Paul used to reach them with the gospel of Christ. A sign is an event with special meaning. It's an unusual occurrence. That's what the Jewish man wanted. He wants evidence. Show me. Prove it to me. Demonstrate it. I will believe in what you are saying. He's looking for signs. But God gave 
the Jewish signs. In the book of John chapter 6, verse 30, the Jews will say to Jesus, prove to us, show us a sign. If you show us a sign, we believe in what you are saying to us. Show us a sign. The Jews will not believe if no miracle is performed. But you know what Paul said? Paul is like, fine, you are looking for a sign, but God has given you a sign. And what is a sign? Jesus is the sign. Jesus is the sign that he has given to them. And that's what the Bible says in John chapter 2 verse 11. Say the first miraculous sign that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. So Jesus is the sign that the Jewish man was looking for. But the problem is that he did not un- they did not understand. Although the scripture will tell us in many passages that Jesus did this sign and some of them believed or many of them believed. So through signs, we can reach men. But that's what the Jewish man is looking for. And that's what Paul is using to point to him, to them, that Jesus is the sign. Using what we find in any culture to reach that particular culture with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says they are looking for a sign. But what are we, what is it that God has presented to us? He said, for the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men, and the weakness of God is stronger than their strengths. The Jewish man, he sees the wisdom that God has provided in God's own way, through the cross, he missed the point. But that's a starting point of reaching the Jewish man with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then Paul went ahead to tell us about the Greeks. What are they looking for? They are seeking for wisdom. Wisdom. You know, the Greeks, they are known for philosophy. They are speculative. The Jewish man is looking for concrete evidence. The Greek man is looking for speculation as a way of reaching God. Thinking they can reach God with their own intellect, with their own understanding, with what they can reason out. Not knowing that the only way to get to God is not by reasoning, but by revelation. We get to God not by reason, but by what? By revelation. So the Greek man is looking for wisdom. He wants to reason things out. He wants to understand everything before he can go forward. And what did Paul tell them? Paul says that that is worldly wisdom. You can't reach God by following worldly wisdom. When Paul was in one of the cities in Greeks, in Aten, the Bible said he preached to them about Christ, about the resurrection. And they said to him, this man has one funny story he's telling. Come, let's take him to where everybody will hear him. And they took Paul to a particular place, and Paul preached to them. And the Bible said, when Paul mentioned about the resurrection, they said, this man has nothing to say. This man, they mocked him. They called him, uh, he said, this man is a babbler. A babbler is a, it's like a bird picking something by the roadside. This man does not know what he's saying. All because Jesus was mentioned as the one who resurrected from the dead. It doesn't make sense to them. They don't understand it. And yet, Paul said, Jesus is the wisdom of God. If you want to know God, you have to know, uh, go through revelation. It's one of the writings of uh, W.A. Tosa. He said, when men imagine God, they will have the God of their imagination, not the God that is revealed. When you imagine God, that's what our forefathers did. They imagined God, they thought he would be like a bird, like a lion, and they fashioned an image after that. There are many people today, they are not following the scripture, what God said, revealed about himself. They are all following what? Their own reasoning. And man, by human reasoning, cannot reach God. But Jesus says, that, uh, he is the way. And Paul is telling us that the way to God, what matters, the content of the message is the cross of Jesus Christ. It's a cross. For, to some people, that looks foolish. How is it that snake was biting the, uh, the Israelites on their way to the uh, promised land? And 
Moses, of all people, made a brazen serpent and put it on top somewhere. I said, if the snake bites you, look at it. Does it make sense? Does it agree with science? It's just like somebody have a coronavirus. And you say, don't take any vaccine or don't take any drug. Or just look at a, a snake hanged somewhere. How many of us will be willing to look at that? How many of us will be willing to say, this is true. It will bring healing. We will, we will, we will mock at the person. We will laugh at the person. But that is the way God has decided to save man. Through the cross. That we look to the man that is knowledge inclined to throw it away, rationalize it. But that's the way of the cross. The way of the cross is the way of salvation. And what is it? That Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. The world in which we are living is a present evil world. It's passing away. Another world is coming. A perfect world. Where there be no death, no suffering, no evil. So we are in this present world and we are here as sinners. God has ordained as a way of salvation for every man to be saved by the cross. But the Greek man will not accept that. He's looking for his own way. Not minding the, oh, the word of the Lord. And Paul talks about the way they communicate their philosophy. And Paul said, look, I am not trying to persuade you with enticing words like the philosophers. They have a way of a rhetorical presentation of what they wanted people to believe. Fanciful words, sweet words, enticing words, but empty words. Paul said, no, I don't do that. I didn't come with you with eloquence. I came to you simply, and I'm preaching to you that your faith will be established in the power of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the gospel. It's as simple as that. Believe in this gospel and be saved. You don't need to reason it out. It is what God has revealed, and it is the way every man must follow. So we see the Jewish people, they are looking for signs. We see the Greeks, they are looking for wisdom. My people, my tribe, as I said, one of the finest African tribes that you can think of, the Igbo. What is it that we are seeking for? The Jewish man seeks for sign. The Greek man seeks for um, what? Wisdom. The Igbos seek for Success. Among the Igbos, success is celebrated. And as any sign of it attracts them. I've never seen a tribe as industrious as they are. Far-sighted as they are. But you see, he wants where it is happening. Where it is happening. And the gospel that makes things happen. One of the philosophers of the Boman, Onye Kwe Chiekwe, when you say yes, your God will say Yes. And there is also a, par a parable which says, English translation, when you are worshiping a God and that God is not performing his function, you will show him the tree from where it is carved. That means you, you put it aside. Pragmatic approach to issues. Where is happening? Praise the Lord. I grew up to know and believe that success is not inherited. You can inherit money from your parents. You can inherit houses from your parents. 
But you see, in the place where I grew, when we are growing up, if your parents marry for you or build house for you, you dare not talk before you are met outside. They will tell you, what are you bragging of? Is it this one that your mama and your papa dash you? It is what a man, a woman is able to do by himself. The number of titles you have, in those days, the farm you have, and so many other things that will attract. When Christianity first came to Igbo land, the, the freeborn, as they put to them, did, were not attracted to Christianity. It was the art car, so to say, don't mind them, that were attracted, that were sent to mission schools. But when these people started succeeding, they became class, they became important. The eyes of other people opened, say, hey, you know, in those days, kings didn't, the chiefs or so, didn't send their children to missionary school at the beginning. It was the slaves that they sent. But when the slaves now came out and became different, we are succeeding. They say, wow. And that was how they embraced Christianity. Success attracts. Why is Islam having inroads in Igbo land today? Yes, there are intellectual reasons for that, but the primary reason is this. When they, when they, many of them, they have, were there, all those people who were selling cola not, and all these things, they were preaching. Nobody listened to them. Nobody heard them. They were preaching for long, the Muslim. Nobody heard them. But do you know why uh, they are having inroads today? Because we are having Allah Haji Chupu that is very successful, educated. He travels, he comes back, he brings some wealth. It's like there is a something here. And everyone, many of them want to go into it. When I became a Christian as a young person, before I I was in my late teens. My grandmother cried. Say, ah, these people in this religion, they don't used to know their parents. This new ch church, they don't used to know their parents. They used to forget, forget their parents. My grandmother cried. Say, this boy, we have lost him. And in the whole village, because many people who were Christians, who became Christians at early as that time, we are not outstanding men in the society. So people look down on them. But today the story has changed in that village. Because there are many of us who have come up from that village who are educated and who are privileged to have cars. And what happened now? It will be, can you join the, the church of this person? Success speaks, brings men, attracts. The average Igbo man will not undertake anything. So the, the Igbo will not accept any system that will accept, sorry, any system that enables them to achieve desired goals and improve their status. That's a fact. And so, is that not what the Bible says? Scholars, theologians talk about redemption and lift. What do they mean by redemption and lift? If God meets you by the, by the roadside, he will pick you up, he will clean you, and he will take you to the palace. If God meets you in the gutter, he will pick you up out of the gutter, he will cleanse you, he will lift you up. That is redemption and lift. And when God was talking about Abraham, he said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of uh, Isaac and Jacob. What is he saying? If you no want to see what I can do with the life of a man, go see Abraham. Go see Abraham. God himself is a proud father. Hello? God is what? A proud father. I remember many years ago when I, when I gained admission to university. Con I mean, contrary to people's expectation because of my background. And I went on a holiday at home. Anybody that came to the house, whether they are looking for my father or not, we invite them. Say, my son is in the university. Redemption and lift. Brethren, 
That is what God himself is standing for. He wants to reach us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free and take us what? To the palace. To high ground. So there is that in the gospel which we must present and make clear to all men that God is interested in saving us and when God saves us, he does not leave us there. He lifts us up. He takes us from nothingness to somethingness so that he can show us forth as evidence of what he can do, of what he can do. Christianity is a beautiful religion, is a beautiful faith. God will not pick you and leave you where you are, as you are. He does the work of transformation in our lives. He does the work of transformation. He changes us. He makes us clean. And he takes us to where we ought to be. That's the beauty of the gospel. It's not you are saved, you become wretched. No. It's that you are saved, there is redemption, and there is lift. And that's what God is doing. So Paul is therefore urging us, using the basic characteristics of each group, each people, to reach men and women for the gospel. Now, we can go to any length. You know, the, uh, one thing you notice is that for those of us, even though for those who are at home and those of us in my village, they will say those who are abroad, abroad includes Lagos. Those who are abroad, both at home and abroad, there is something that is cherished. That's kinship. Solidarity. Support. And Paul is urging that anything we can do. So for many years I've been in Lagos as a Christian. I did not quite associate with my people. They call it village meeting. But was at a point, although for some time now, for over years, because of uh, uh, busy schedules, I've not been able to go, but I participate in one way or the other. Because I believe that Jesus himself did the same thing. He attended some special programs that we organized. Why? Because he had a missional motive. Missional motive is when you go there with the aim of winning them. So when I joined that group, and because I have some respect among, if not all of them, some of them. And yes, we get there, they'll be doing one thing or the other. And yes, some of them will drink beer, no problem. And of course, they will give me what I, I do take. But you know what? Anytime they say, let us pray, guess who will be asked to pray? Eh? Eh? And do you know the kind of prayer we call salmon prayer? Do you know salmon prayer? Lord, we thank you for today. You brought us together from many places to come to this place. And you gave your son Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And you say anyone who believes will not die. As many as are here today, you brought us here for a purpose so that we will receive you as our Lord and Savior. You promise you will forgive us all our sins. Anybody here who has sinned, oh Lord, forgive him. Am I not praying? Then, every December, they, don't call, they call it end of the year prayer. End of the year get together. Guess who will give the sermon of that day? It's me. They will say, Reverend, preach. Reverend, preach. Because as we are having the meeting there, I have my car parked there. I have the driver uh, by the side. Are you getting what I'm saying? Am I being proud? No. It's being missional. Being missional. So I will be the one who will give the end of the year message. Nobody needs to tell you what the message is all about. Salvation. Salvation. And you know why? Some of them, I tell them, where some of them go there because of support, the support they get. Because of the support they get. One of, one of us was sick of recent and we have to the wife couldn't do, manage the situation. We have to run around and send the man home. In fact, it was on the way 
when he was going that he died on the road. Now, who will not want to belong to that kind of, meet, that kind of a meeting? But be missional about it. I'm not saying every meeting or every thing you go, but when you have to find yourself there, be missional about it. The missional about it is you are going there to influence men and women for the gospel, for the kingdom. And if any church can replicate that, why not? Why not where there is a support, where you know you are in trouble, you, be, you trouble, you will be ministered to, everybody would like to belong to that group, to that church. Brethren, reaching every man, every tribe, with what we know about that tribe, so that we, by the grace of God, might win them to Christ. As I said, the story, I didn't complete it, is that, well, I think I mentioned it, I've not been going of recent, yes, for over years now, I know, because of the time they meet and my own program, but I try to keep in touch. And why am I keeping in touch? To reach them with the gospel of Christ. I'm not going there because of what they are drinking, and my wife is here. The day we, we hosted them in our house many years ago, and as they were coming, some of them said, uh, we know a reverend will give us beer. They are, they are joking. They know we won't, give them, we won't give them beer. And they came. We gave each one of them. My wife is a, is a wonderful cook. She gave a good uh, dish. And we prepared all these things. They drank malt and uh, what do you call it? Um, juice. And I, I made sure that every one of them left with a pack of, uh, with a, what do you call it, juice, one each. We did it for a purpose. We did it for a goal. We had a goal in mind to let these people know that they can be saved by Jesus Christ and that salvation does not mean that one has lost touch with the realities of his people or her people. Mission now about what we do in order that we might reach them for the sake of the gospel, so that I may win some. That I may win some. Brethren, I want to tell us that the way of the gospel, the way of salvation, as God planned it, is the cross. And we are not ashamed of the cross of Calvary. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jews first, and to the Greeks, to, the, to others. The way God has ordained to save man is by the cross. Yes, it may look foolish to some people, but that's God's way. That is God's way. Brethren, Paul talked about those who are being saved and those who are perishing. The choice is yours. You can belong to the group of those who are being saved, not those who are perishing. Perishing because you are looking for success at the expense of the gospel, not knowing that within the gospel there is success. Perishing because you are looking for signs, something to prove to you. You can perish. Perishing because it doesn't make sense to you. That's not God's way. Paul said, the wisdom of the world cannot please God. You can't please God by following the wisdom of the world. You have to follow the cross of, of Christ by being saved. And when you are saved, you'll be lifted up to believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. And using every opportunity you have to reach men. Every privilege God has given to you to reach men. This morning, I have a simple invitation for us to come to be part of those who will be saved. Or those who have been saved. Just simply saying, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I... I I need you into my life, come into my life. I did that many years ago. Many years ago, I got home. I saw one of my brothers, my brothers. I said, I was asking him some questions. What of so, so, as, a, as a young boy, as a young boy, I was not up to 20. As a young boy, what of this girl? What of that one? What of, this young man was telling me that he doesn't do all those things. I was just looking at him. What does he mean by not doing all these things? Then he invited me for a crusade. I went to that crusade, and the man of God was using the heart of man. I don't know how many of us, the heart of man is no more. 
the heart of man. How many of you have seen what they call heart of man before? Wow. It is a picture where they draw all kinds of uh, animals. Tortoise was there. The man will explain, say, all these animals, they are in our heart. Not physically, not literally, but they are in our heart. He said the tortoise. Tortoise is very trickish, very cunning. He will explain how tortoise used to deceive people, how tortoise used to do many things. He will talk about dog. Dog is a fornicator, an adulterer. Dog who can travel from here to far distance to fornicate. The man will explain. He will talk about the lion, how lion can fight. He will explain. As he was explaining all these things, I was seeing myself. Remember I told you, Paul said, it's not by wisdom of men. It's not by persuasive words. How eloquent the man is. How attractive the man looks. No. He said, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, as the man was explaining all these things, I saw myself in the picture. I said, ah, young man, you're, you're, you're a sinner. I realized I was a sinner. And I belonged to the religion, to the church at that time. They told us nobody knows who will be saved. It's only when we get to heaven. We don't know what will be saved. We go every Friday to do confession. And when we do confession, if you're afraid of it, you say, hmm. Just wait after Sunday. After Sunday. So we behave. After Sunday, say, uh -huh, you, you are talking rubbish the other time. Or you are repeat it. So we, that was the kind of environment I grew up. And so when you get to heaven, go with where you are, you have seen. If I wear the good things you have done, if the good things you have done is higher, you will enter paradise. If the bad one is, you will enter hell. That was the kind of thing, mind. I wasn't sure I was saved until I had that man that day. And what did I do? Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. It was as simple as that. I didn't have to contribute anything. I didn't have to uh, give anything. I do tell a story of one of my uncles. He belonged to one church. Uh, in that church, they do all kinds of things for salvation or whatever. One of the things they will do is that for somebody to climb coconut and bring the coconut without it falling down so that they can use to do work for him. And I climb coconut as a young boy, put the chin on my chest and brought it for them to take to church. You don't need all those words. You don't need, all you need is simply say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. And I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody. I say, this is the time for you to do that. I just given you my own testimony. That was over 40 years ago. And I've been consistent in my Christian faith. God has been helping me. Because I took that decision. Nobody can be, you see, nobody, people, if anybody tells you that you can grow and grow and grow and become a Christian, the person is not telling you the truth. You become a Christian once. And it's not because you are born into a Christian home. My father is a, is a pastor. My mother is, no, is, no, 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 no. So, brethren, what a wonderful opportunity to, for us to give our lives to Jesus. And the challenge also for every one of us is that, that we may win some. That I may win some. That's a responsibility. That we will use what we know about each tribe, each person, each group to reach them for the kingdom of God. Let's bow our heads. Redemption and lift, God will touch you and make you whole. Please, as you bow your heads, if you want, I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to some of us. You want me to pray for you this morning. And you want me to pray, you want to say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I can't save myself. I can't help myself. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Just put your right hand on your hand chest, if you are praying that prayer, say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life today. I want to forget about the past life. I want to live a new life, a newness of life by you coming into my life and forgiving me my sins. If you place your hand on your chest, you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please, just as you place your hand on your chest wherever you are, 
Just raise your right hand up. Let me notice you. I will pray for you. You want to do it? There's nothing to be ashamed. The day I heard about the gospel, I was not ashamed. I gave myself to Jesus. If there's anybody here who wants to do that, please just raise your hand. Wherever you are seated, just raise your hand. I will pray for you. I will pray for you. Yes, brother, thank you for, your, for raising your hand. Any other person? Yes, somebody at the back. Okay, please, kindly do me a favor. Can you stand up so that I will notice wherever you are, brother? Please, can you stand up if you have raised your hand? And somebody at the back, the ushers will help. Just come forward, let me pray for you quickly. Come forward, let me pray for you quickly. Just march forward there, I will pray for you. There is what I call redemption and lift. God will touch you. He will raise you. He will not leave you where you are. Come out boldly. Come out confidently. The rest, begin to, uh, begin to pray. Close your eyes. The rest of us, and pray God help me to reach men and women with the gospel. Please just look at that. I want you to do something. Those of you who are here, those of you who are here, as you kneel down, say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. You are not confessing to anybody. You are not telling anybody. You are telling Jesus. Say, Jesus, have mercy on me. I know I am a sinner. I don't want to go back the same way I came. Forgive me all my sin. You are not confessing to anybody. It's to God. And you need to open up to him because he knows your heart. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. I don't want to live here the same way I came. If you are still there, please, you can join them. You want to make this decision. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day that God has ordained to bring about the salvation of your soul. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me my sins. I need you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life. Say, Lord, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. The scripture says, as many as believe him, and to those who receive him, he will give the right to become the son of God, the daughters of God. Today, by your decision, you are going to be a child of God. You are a child of God, and God will forgive you all your sins. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for this. Your sons and daughters that have responded to this message. Paul, the great apostle, said that he didn't use enticing words, but those words given by the Holy Spirit so that their faith will be established in the power of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit that brought you here that has led you to make this decision and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we keep and guide you in the name of Jesus. You will not go back the same way in the name of Jesus. The Lord who has led you here today and who has enabled you to make this decision will keep you and bless you and prosper you in the name of Jesus. He will open a new chapter of your life and he will lead you from step to step until you become what you want to, he wants you to be in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, forgive them their sins. As they go back today, they will go home rejoicing. And miracles will take place in your life to the glory of his name. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, can you join now? Shall we stand as we pray? Father, we thank you for your words. The entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. You have called us and you have commissioned us like Paul. And you have given us privileges as well as responsibility to reach as many as possible so that we might win them. Paul said he became all things to all men. 
Open our eyes of understanding, Holy Spirit. And grant, Lord, that if by your own power, we will reach men and women for the gospel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. And Lord, I pray for the Igbo race, a peculiar people, a beloved people before you, men and women you have raised. Our destiny here on earth will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. I pray for everyone who has heard this word today that there will be a lifting for every one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. We return all the glory to you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.